persistent love thank him for the goodness of his heart for the grace that brought the gospel to us for the beauty of waking up every morning and knowing his love of experiencing him again and again every day in all of his goodness we thank the one who has loved us in every way in every form who has never left us who will never leave us who meets us in our broken places who holds us together. Thank you, Lord. Cause this is a time to experience you again. You are the word at the beginning. God, the Lord, 
Lord, as we make this final confession of who we are in Christ. I stand by faith in what you've done. I'm complete in what you've done. I'm forgiven and redeemed. I stand by faith in what you've done. I'm complete in what you've done. I'm forgiven and redeemed. I stand. Come on, go ahead and begin to mutter in other tongues. Begins to mutter in other tongues wherever you are. Kabal shete bado kususu. Shada bana kose bibi kubi ababa ababa bana bana daga 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 la bana bana daga daga daga. Rakote bibi kubi biya shada bana konde de pausha. Rada daga daga bala susu bede de daga 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 bala bala daga 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 bala bala daga 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 bala. Rakata daga bala pante susu bede de daga daga bala pante onsha baba daga kausu bede de bala bala. Rada daga 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 bala bala daga 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 bala bala daga bala bala daga 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 pausha. Rakete daga 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 bala bala daga 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 bala bala daga 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 Shakata da 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 Rakata <laughs> Rakata <laughs> Ja ba 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand. He said, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. Say what? Make tremendous power available. Dynamic in its workings. Hallelujah. In other words, we are believers gather together to pray. What will happen? There is power. Hallelujah. So as a believer, when we gather together to pray, what we do is we generate spiritual capacity. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray one more time. As we are praying, we are generating spiritual capacity. Come on, go ahead and begin to mutter in other tongues. I will generate spiritual capacity. Go ahead and begin to mutter in other tongues. Avoid distractions. Avoid distractions. Oh, Oh, Hallelujah. So we pray, Lord, the entrance of your word give light and understanding. Hallelujah. So we are praying that, Lord, the entrance of your word give light and understanding. Come on, go ahead and begin to pray. That, Lord, let the entrance of your word give light and understanding. Father, let the entrance of your word today give light and understanding. Come on, go ahead. Oh, come on, 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 Rapasha, let the entrance of your word give light Oh, the entrance of your word give light. The entrance of your word give light and understanding. The entrance of your word give light and understanding. Radabante, 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 Radabadabadante. Oh, the entrance of your word give light and understanding. Mashadabadasa, Radabasha, Radabasha, Radabadabada. The entrance of the world give light 
an understanding. Hallelujah. So lastly, hallelujah. So lastly, we are praying, Lord, let your word profit us tonight in the name of Jesus. That we are profited by your word tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and begin to pray. That Father, let your word profit us tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your word profit us tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and begin to mutter another thoughts. Oh, Father, let your word profit us tonight. Le manto bibia ka shidia bande ko eli ba non bande ko ba suswa je dibi da ba ba la ba da ba da ba ba oh ja da ba da ba da ga susu ve de de ga ba da ba da ga da ra da ga da ba la ba da ga da da ga da ba la ba da ga da da ga da ra ba 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 la ba to a sha ba 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 ra da ga ba ba la ba da ga da da ga da ga da ga da ba la ba da ga da ga da ra da ga da ba la ba da ga da da ga da ba da ba da ra da ga da ba la ba da ga da da ga da ba da ra ba 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 Oh, Father, let your word profit us tonight in the name of Jesus. Masha Baba, Rabba Baba, Lebede Bada Baba Bada 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 Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so, the Bible tells us that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy, yeah? Yes, so uh, we're going to be engaging in a little exercise. <laughs> um, please pray for us. Um, I'd like us all to just close our eyes. Eyes closed. Um, just right now, as the person with the keyboard just ministers to us with music. If you want a seat, you can grab one. This might take a bit. <laughs> so. so I believe that everything that God gave us, everything, every part of our anatomy, every part of the earth, was just to facilitate our relationship with him. And that includes our imaginations, right? And so we're going to be using that in this exercise. And so I want you to picture yourself in a place that means calm to you. That just when you hear peace in your mind, and you have to think of a place that is synonymous with peace, where would that be? For me, that's always by the water. But just think of your place in that room. And allow yourself be in this room. In a world where there's so much noise, where there's so much guilt and there's so many ideas of everything you should or shouldn't be. In this place, the only thing you are is someone designed by God, loved by God, made by God. In this place, you are your truest, freest self, exactly as God designed you, exactly as God intended you to be, nothing more or less than who you are, enough just as you are. And then in this room, Jesus walks in and you see him, beautiful, love.
And so now I'm going to give you space to be with this Jesus. To talk to him. To love on him. To listen to him. And if you want to unburden, then there's time for that too. If you have a rant, there's time for that too. But it's just you and your Jesus in this place. interesting that if you ask Christ, he'll tell you that we are perfected in him. But when you ask us, we have other ideas. We set standards for our own selves and judge ourselves when we fail to reach them. And so now I want you to confess to Jesus all those standards, all those things. Everything that designs itself as space, everything you think separates you from him, everything you imagine is a distance, let him know all the ways you don't feel close to him, all the ways you think you fall short of his design, let him lift that off your heart, let him show you who you are in him. I want you to spend the next two minutes letting Christ embrace you. Letting yourself embrace Christ. And letting yourself embrace who you are in Christ. There's no judgment here. There's only love.
Hallelujah. What an intense time of, you know, intimacy we just had with the Lord. Thank you, Chenemi, for that beautiful, beautiful session. Um, I need somebody to just help me. Let's sing one song and then we'll rise to read God's word. Paradokoshon de Clara da Basos de Praga da Balabahash. I think she'll allow me to sing first. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Say, I'll never be more loved than I am right now. And I will be content in every circumstance Jah You are enough Choir help me I will be content In every circumstance Jah You are, you are enough
You won't just pray in the Holy Ghost. Shake upon the supreme Kiva Baradada Malaba. Yield your tongue to the God who is more than enough. Nebroko Supra Katanda Shabran de Kobrina Nimokova Hus. Baradada Dabo Simante Kali Fiteli Supreme Labasi. Baradana no 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 is our providential God, is our providential Father, is one who is intentional, deliberate about our lives, is the one with the limitless supply. It's called El Shaddai, the multi breasted one, Cabananto Supriki, the Liveranas. Is the one who says that the cattle on the thousand hills belongs to him. Manakom Veradilo Sus, the Prida Cabanandos. Zigobon the Siko Prana is the Lord for whom and to whom all things consist. Ilibokova Ranandas is Jaira. He is Jaira. Kalamando Sukara Navan the Sibra da Bahasa. Shibananana Malada Baragodo Lidi Bidi 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 Call him Father. Call him Habba. Thank you, Habba. Thank you, Father. You are my daddy. You are my daddy. You are my father. You are my father. My daddy. Zego Dovanani Susto Barana has Kebolonda Saha. You are my father. To him on pair. Radagaba Sum the Kivinimando Subrigi de Beliba Hasina Namando Kobaradi. Eini babami kabana na no mosukara na mando sada kabahasi. You are my father. Jaira, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. Father, I thank you. We give you praise because you are Jaira and you are enough. Hallelujah. Let's rise to our feet, grab our Bibles, and let's read together God's word. We're standing in honor of the word of God. Luke chapter 4. We'll take about um, five verses in Luke chapter 4 as our opening text tonight. I want to welcome up specially to the Global Teaching Service for this week. And I know that we're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. Um, look for from verse 16 through to verse 21. We will read in concert as a family of faith. One, two, three, go. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty they that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. Wow. And the highs of all of them were in the synagogue, were fasting the name. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in the name of Jesus. And so, dear Father, we thank you for you are the God who supplies utterance to your minister. Thank you because my tongue tonight is like the pen of a ready writer ready to inscribe your word in season upon the fleshy heart of my hearers. Thank you because the same anointing upon the preacher to preach is upon the hearers to hear unto mutual edification. 
Tonight we thank you because there'll be penetrative insights. There'll be instructions in righteousness. There'll be revelation knowledge. And there'll be explosion of joy, joy and rejoicing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. We thank you because you will confirm these very words like you always do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please have your seat in God's presence. You can stay on the keyboard for now so that we don't get to the end quickly. Amen. Woo! I have a very short time, uh, but in the brevity of the time that we have, we're going to be so, so blessed. Um, th this entire service, um, I feel like I should break it into three teaching sessions so that I can lay emphasis on one. But then um, it's going to bring me to a place where it's going to be as though I'm repeating. So I'm just going to run through it as best as I could while relying on the Holy Spirit to help me stay where I should at any given point in time um, just so that we are blessed and God is glorified. Amen. I want to talk about laying hold tonight. I want to talk about laying hold on God's promises, laying hold on prophecy, laying hold on purpose, laying hold on the blessing. Um, however you want to um, give the ending to the title, you're free. But what I really want to talk about is laying hold. And um, I, many times I try to, or by default, I'm an expository preacher, but just sometimes so that the revelation is complete, I try to teach topically. So um, I'm going to try to stay on just those five verses and try to extrapolate um, the concepts that we have before us tonight. Um, one of the first things that I want us to see from Luke chapter 4 from verse 16 is that the Bible says that Jesus returned to Nazareth where he was brought up. And then on the Sabbath day, he stood to read the scripture. Let me quickly say this. There's something about where you were brought up. There's something about where you have been. There's something about the familia that is always um, antagonistic to your next level, to your future. Um, many times the enemy of the novel is the familiar. Many times the enemy of progress is your comfort zone. All right, so Jesus in Luke chapter 4 begins to show us that even though in the natural, even though by natural happenstance, by natural reality in that sense, where you are from is supposed to hold you down. But it's, it shows us that if you have a certain kind of mindset, where you are from will only be a spring springboard to where God wants you to be. Amen. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter where we've been, it doesn't matter what background we're from, it doesn't matter our present, you know, circumstance, um, God is set to do big things with us. Hallelujah. God is set to do big things with you. Glory to Jesus. So you see, in life, in life we must be people who are daring. We must be people who have faith adventures. Glory to Jesus. To arrive at destiny, you have to go on a quest for more. One of the things that we see in Jesus when he got to this place is that he went on a quest. Are you getting what I'm saying? He went on a quest and I'm going to explain it. The next thing we see that I want to show to us is that he opened the book. Hallelujah. I'm talking about laying out. The Bible says that the book of the prophet Isaiah was delivered to him and he opened it. If as believers we must win in life, if as believers we must become all that God has designed us to be, then our Bibles cannot be closed. Hallelujah. The Bible contains, I, I want to, I, 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 personally, I view the scriptures as God's love letters to me. Hallelujah. That's how I see the Bible. God's love letter. And in that love letter, there are instructions. Praise God forevermore. In that love letter, there are promises. In that love letter, there is rebuke, there is reproof. Glory to Jesus. There is impartation. Glory to Jesus. There is everything I need to become all God wants me to be. Hallelujah. That's how I see the canon of scripture. That everything I need to become all God wants me to be is in the word. Is in the word. Is in the word. The Bible says that Jesus opened the book. I want to say this to you, your purpose, your pursuit, God's plan for your life is locked up in the word. If you lay hold on the word, you will become everything that God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Jesus opened the Bible and every now and then you will hear, you will hear the scripture say that Jesus was speaking and say that he did so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Can I announce to you a fulfillment of scriptures? 
Are you going to understand what I'm saying? Say, I'm a fulfillment of scriptures. My life fulfills scriptures. If there's any promise in the word of God, I'm already jumping ahead of myself. If there's any promise in the word of God, if there's any possibility in the word of God, it exists for me. Are you getting the point here? If there's any reality in the word of God, it exists for me. There is nothing we see in God's word that is not possible for me. That's the kind of Christian you ought to be. If it is in God's word, then it's my reality. Let me say this to you. African magic does not define your reality. Glory to God. CNN does not define your reality. Al Jazeera does not define your reality. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. My reality is in God's word. Oh, I love that statement. I think it was Joel Austin that made it popular. I am what God says I am. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. This is the disposition and the mindset of the stellar Christian. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus opened the book. If you would only have an open book, an open Bible, all right, then your life would always have direction. Interestingly, in the book of Daniel, this is not in my notes, we see that Daniel understood by the books. The Bible says that Daniel understood by the books that the time of captivity of Israel was over. So I asked myself, what if he didn't open the book? Many Christians are suffering because their Bibles are closed. The day you see it in the world, in the word of God, you will refuse to start, ask, I'm sorry, the day you see certain things in the word of God, you will refuse accepting certain realities. I told the story of how I used to be a very sickly child. I was very brilliant growing up, one of the best in any class I was in. But somewhere down the line, I used to become very sickly and I was always sick at the, at the time of exams. So from first, second or third, I started coming in 23rd, 24th, that kind of, oh, you're born 24, well, almost 100 in my class in Jebode Grammar School, amen. So, I went to that kind of school, glory to Jesus. And then I would always be sick during exams, such that at some point, people were even thinking maybe I, I had sickle cell anemia or something. And we're not mocking anyone that has that kind of challenge. If you're watching this broadcast right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are healed. I declare that you are healed. I declare right now that every organ in your body, every flow in your bloodstream is purified by the anointing of God's spirit and that genotype is changing now. In the name of Jesus. If you just listen to that, you may need to go do a test and check and confirm God's goodness. Hallelujah. So people were, they were insinuating that. Glory to Jesus. But after a while, I got born again and I started looking at the scripture. And I saw Proverbs chapter 4. The Bible said the word of God is medicine to my flesh. Glory to Jesus. And since that day, I've not taken another medicine. Nothing wrong with medical science. But for me, the word of God is medicine to my flesh. Hallelujah. And I've made up my mind. I say, anytime I feel symptoms, I'm going to take my own medicine. Glory to Jesus. And I, 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 from that day, I'm talking about 2008 till this moment, Panadol has not entered my mouth. And trust me, I felt symptoms before. Amen. I just told myself, if it's in the word, then it's for me. Jesus doesn't tell lies. But I said, for by two immutable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie. So you can locate God's word for your health. You can locate God's word for your prosperity. You can locate God's word for your marriage. You can locate, it doesn't matter how many people get divorced, you're going to have a good home. Are you following what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how foolish the men in, the gener in this generation are. You're going to have a faithful man. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? He's not going to cheat on you. He's not going to be an abuser. That's the kind of man you would have. Because it is your reality according to the word of God. Are you following me here? So the Bible says that he opened the Bible and he read. He read. I'm going to talk about that much later. Let me just jump that. And this is what I want us to see from Luke chapter 4. The Bible says that Jesus closed the book when he was done reading. You know, notice I talked about the fact that you need to open the book. But we see that Jesus did not stop at opening the book 
when he opened the book and he read from the prophecy of Isaiah, the Bible says that he closed it and then he did something. You see, what happens to many believers, and I call it the spirit of religion, is that we stay reading the Bible over and over and over again and we refuse to act on it. Hallelujah. The proof that you believe is your action. That's why James would say, show me your faith apart from works and I will show you my faith by my works. The Bible says Jesus closed the book. And the Bible says that, this is, this is where I'm going, I'm almost there. The Bible says that the eyes of them all were fixed on him. Kanamanto, Saklaranamande. And the next thing that Jesus said was astound, astounding. You know what he said? Can we read verse 21 together? Look at it again. Look at what Jesus said when he closed the book. Luke 4, 21. If you're there, can you read one to go? And he began to say unto them, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearts. Hmm. Think about that a minute. Think about that. You know what Jesus was saying? Jesus was saying, I am the fulfillment of prophecy. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Lord, help me to communicate this as I ought to. I'm talking about laying hold on God's promises. Jesus read from the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he was done reading, the Bible says he closed the book and he began to say to them, this day is this prophecy fulfilled in your very sight. That is, I am the fulfillment of prophecy. I am who the Bible spoke about. I am who Isaiah saw. Isaiah wrote about me. Are you following what I'm saying here? That means everything that we see in the word of God refers to me. Glory to Jesus. If the word of God says someone can heal the sick, he's talking about me. If the word of God says someone can raise the dead, he's talking about me. This day is the scripture fulfilled in your eyes. You see, much of the problem of evangelical Christianity is the lack of understanding of this narrative. Evangelical Christianity believes in 2 H. Are you following what I'm saying now? Evangelical Christianity believes in history and believes in hope. But there's a bunch of believers. Oh, glory to God. And we had those believers that believe in now. Listen, the realities of God are not set in antiquity. The realities of God are not just historical facts. It was not just Isaiah's writing. The way the Jews read the scriptures, they read it as Isaiah wrote. Jesus said, this reality is not antiquated, it is mine now. Oh my God, my God. So you see people say things like, oh, what of the days of the apostles? Hallelujah. There was a time in Nigeria when there was revival. Oh, you see people say things like Agbara 1930, God of Babalola, God of Adeboye. Hello, God of Adeboye is the God of Magduja. God of Adeboye, God of Babalola is my God. If he did it with Babalola, he would do it with me and much more. The best of God is never in the past. The best of God is not, listen to me, the best of God is not in the past. The best of God is not in the future. The best of God is in the now. Woo! <laughs> because because there, are, there are two errors in this place. There's the error of what God did. But there's another error. The error of what God will do. So we have another set of believers who are hopeful believers. One day in the sweet by and by, God will send revival. How about I start a revival? How about I am the revival? Kayanamando Soklabaha. Well, so we talk about God's generals. We talk about uh, Alexandra Dowey, Maria Woodward Heta, um, who else? Martin Luda, um, Manako Paranekea, um, Ami Semple McPherson, Katrin Kuhlman. How about you? How about you look at God's word and say, This day? Someone say, This day. Jesus said, this thing that Isaiah wrote is not yesterday. 
Mm-hmm. This thing that Isaiah wrote is not for tomorrow. Hey, I am who Isaiah talked about. Are you getting what I'm talking to you again? Can we raise a generation of Christians beginning from here and now, from the preacher to the audience, a generation of Christians that says, I am prophecy, I am prophecy on two legs. I am revival on two legs. Oh, I am the dispenser of God's power on two legs. When you need power, I am here. When you need revival, I am here. When you need a testimony of Jesus, I am here. When you need character, I am here when you need competence I am here because I am who God says I am and I can do what God says I can do so we have historical believers and hopeful believers but I'm talking to a generation of now believers you know have you wondered the kind of generation we have. Ah, the, and we're, 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 we're very confident in our historical rhetoric. We know everything. Oh. We can give you the handouts of, of revival in Nigerian church history. We can tell you about the prophets. We can tell you about the apostles. We can tell you about the teachers. We can tell you about the preachers and the revivalists. We can tell you all that happened from 1930 to 1945 to the late 80s, the early 90s. We know all of the histories, but no one is contending and no one is declaring that these things that happen can happen now. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, it says that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The reality of the word of God has not lost his potency. Oh, let me say to somebody, we are not looking for the God of Elijah. We are looking for the Elijahs of God. We are looking for men who would dare to rise up and say, listen to me, I am the revival you have been praying for. Jesus picked the book and read. So it's not enough to know scriptures. It's not enough to read scriptures. We have to come to a point where we leave scriptures. Hallelujah. Then we have the other set, the hopeful folks. They say God will send a revival. And I believe that. But you know that there's a way you can keep postponing the days of God. Who am I preaching to tonight? Are you getting what I'm saying tonight? There's a way you can keep postponing the dealings of God. You can keep saying, one day I will heal the sick. Do you understand that? One day I will preach the gospel. One day, one day, one day. But Jesus did not say one day. You know, he didn't read it and say, one day this will be fulfilled. Come on, no quota, Sahaya. Jesus read it and said, this day. This day. The story was told about Hag Bishop Benson in Daosa, who his pastor just said in the passing that you can raise the dead. And he began going everywhere looking for dead people to raise. That's the kind of heart people who will lay hold on God's promises must have. Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory said he was an invalid as a child. He read the scriptures and the scriptures said he could be healed. And then from his dead bed, he began to take steps of faith and walk in and say, if this is true, then it has to be a reality in my whole life. Listen, believers, the Bible is either true or not. Are you following what I'm saying here? Is it that true or not? And it's you that must determine what you want to believe. Is it true for you? These signs shall follow they that believe. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Is it true for you? Are you a believer? Do you believe? Do you believe? Can you raise the dead? Can you heal the sick? Are you following what I'm saying to you tonight? Can we lay hold on the promises of God? Can we lay hold on the promises of God? Can we lay hold on the promises of God? Can we be now believers? Hallelujah. I'm not a yesterday believer. I'm not a tomorrow believer. I'm a now believer. There's a moment called now. There's a day called today. And this is the day of the Lord. 
This is the day of the Lord. Are you following me tonight? This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. There will be charismatic signs in my days. There will be charismatic renewers in my days. There will be competent believers in my days. There will be holy brethren in my days. It's not just going to be a prayer point. It will be my reality. And it is my reality now. Hallelujah. We've got to start acting the word. We've got to start living by faith. We've got to start doing the word. We've got to start laying hold on kingdom realities. It's, it's not enough to talk about it. It's not enough to sermonize about it. It's not enough to preach about it. It's not enough to meditate on it. We have to start acting it and even now. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 13, the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold. Lay hold. Apprehend divine realities. Are you following what I'm saying? Catch it. Trap it. One of the ways you trap divine realities is by doing it. Hallelujah. It's by doing it. Glory to Jesus. Let me tell you a story. Many years ago, 2011, was when I, I, I first broke into the power of God and started seeing supernatural things happening in my life and in my ministry. And what happened? I was praying. I was just praying. I had had an experience. Someone that said some things to me that I didn't like. So I gave myself to prayer and I'll fast three days every week as a young guy on campus. And even the days I'm not fasting, I usually don't have food. Praise God forevermore. <laughs> But I'll, I'll fast Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Sorry, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday were my own day of fasting. And then on, Thursday, on Wednesday, I'll see fast with my prayer unit. On Thursday, prayer unit members will see fast. So usually, it's only on Saturday I don't fast. And I'll be praying. I'll be praying, Lord, I want power. Lord, I want to see things. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I kept praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. But it was as if I was not seeing it. With the benefit of hindsight, I realized that the reason it was as if I was not seeing it was because I was not doing it. The moment I prayed for power, God released it. In fact, even before I prayed, I had it. But I was not seeing it because I was not using it. So one day, I organized a video where remedial students at the time, I organized a video for remedial students and I invited two senior friends on the campus who I saw moved in the power of God for that video. And then I told them, oh, prayer, you'll come by this time. Pastor, you'll come by this time in our vigil and you come and be a blessing to us. And they said, okay, we will come. And guess what happened? We started the vigil around 10 o'clock. Around 1 o'clock when the first minister was supposed to come up to preach, I did not see him. I didn't see him or the second guest minister. Two of them were not around. And I was like, what do we do here? Prayer is supposed to be here by now. Pastor Goffrey is not around. Where are these guys? And then we're just there. And I just said, okay, let's be praying in tongues. Let's be praying in tongues. And we're just praying in tongues. And then somehow, by chance, I laid hands on someone, on a young lady. I can't forget that experience in my life. Just laid hands on a young lady. And you know, when you lay hands, not expecting anything to happen. Do you understand? Because it has never happened. You just, I just touched her and passed. And then I heard the sound. I just said, boom. <laughs> she was under the power. I'm like, whoa. It has come. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. And then as I touch in others, and everywhere was on fire. I'm like, wow. So this thing I've been praying about, I actually had it. You will not know how much power you've been generating until you hacked out in faith. So somebody says, I am sick. So let me pray for you. It doesn't matter what the name of the sickness is called. Say in the name of Jesus, be healed. Go for a test. This is how we trap supernatural experiences. This is how they become our normal. Not every time somebody say, I'm sick, you say, call pastor. Hallelujah. Pastor is anointed by the privilege of the calling and the office he occupies. But you are anointed by the privilege of sonship. Hallelujah. Do you hear what we're talking to you about today? Are you getting the point here? There's a time called now. And we've got to lay hold. We've got to lay hold. We've got to trap these experiences. Hebrews 10 verse 23 says to hold fast to the profession of our faith, not wavering. Hold fast. Hold fast. 
refuse to take no for an answer. Hallelujah. If God can bless people, he might as well bless me. If God can make people rich, he might as well make me rich. Don't stop saying God can. Say God is doing it in my life. Stop speaking Christianese. Start working in power. Don't just learn the language and the literature of the kingdom. Live the kingdom. Listen to me. Whatever God can do, he has done. Whatever God can do, he has done. And whatever God can do and has done, he can do with me. Are you getting the point? If God used Babalola, he can use me. If God used Chris or Yakilome, he can use me. If God uses Papa Moyo, he can use me. I don't know who you respect. I don't know who you look up to in this body. If God can use them, he can use you. And he will. And guess what? He is. In the name of Jesus. God can. He will and he is. Glory to Jesus. Man or call see brown no pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues. Sheketa prakata nana ko para de gidi balabahase. Brako son stoklara namanda sika paranandas. I'm trying to speed up this message. Kelebrondo ko preneko susto pregadi bakai. Mako tombre gede broto susto prika pane. Shkapana nana namando suprekiti bahatis. In Jesus' name. In first John chapter 3, verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. We're not sons of God yesterday. We won't be sons of God tomorrow. We are sons of God now. Are you following what I'm saying? At every moment, M, every time T, you are a son of God. You are not a son of God when you feel like. You are not a son of God when you are prayed up. You are not a son of God when you just finished fasting and praying. Even in your weakest moment, you are a son of God. Even when you just finish eating a bath, you are a son of God. You are always a son of God. Beloved! Now are we the sons of God. And for as many as believed in, to them gave you power to be called the sons of God. If you are a son of God, you are a custodian of the power of God. I'm talking about power tonight. If you are a son of God, you are a custodian of the power of God. If you see a sick person on the street, by privilege of sonship, you can get them healed. I'm a son of God. When are you a son of God? Now. I'm a son of God when now I'm a son of God when now not yesterday not tomorrow I'm a son of God now and by virtue of my sonship I have an inheritance this is a supernatural inheritance I have a supernatural inheritance do you know we are supernatural people we are I love the way we say it in certain circles we are naturally supernatural why did I say that? How did you get born again? Supernaturally. It's impossible to get born again naturally because it's the recreation of a dead human spirit and a fusion with the Holy Spirit. There are two operations that happen when people get born again. The recreation of the dead human spirit and the fusion with the Holy Spirit. That can only happen supernaturally. This is why Archbishop Nicodemus in John chapter 3 could not understand what Jesus was saying. What we called Nicodemus a Pharisee he was a bishop and an archbishop in our days at the time. But yet he could not understand spiritual things because they are spiritually discerned. Are you getting the point? Jesus was giving four, Jesus explained to him in four different ways what it means to be born again. He didn't get it. Hallelujah. He didn't get it. Oh, but whatever is born of flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of spirit is spirit. Bless God, I'm born of spirit. I am spirit. Say, I'm born of spirit. I am spirit. Hallelujah. So I can design spiritual things. I can compare spiritual with spiritual. Glory to God. God can use me. God will use me. God is using me. Glory to Jesus. When the people need a teacher, I will show up. When the people need a preacher, I will show up. I don't have to be called into the office, but when there's a need in the, in the body, I will show up. The anointing will come upon me and I will deliver God's heart. That's the kind of believers we must raise. Believers who have laid hold on the tangibility of the reality of God. If God can with anyone, he might as well do it through me. Hallelujah. 
Are you getting the point here? We're born again supernaturally. Filled with the Holy Ghost supernaturally. Led by the Spirit supernaturally. How many of you have gotten people saved before? You, you preach to somebody and they receive the gospel. You did that how? Supernaturally. Everything we do as believers is supernatural. And all we need to begin to do is to stretch the scope. Mm, if I could get born again supernaturally, I can raise the dead supernaturally. Do you understand? We've all had supernatural experiences. What we need to do is to begin to enlarge our hearts and stretch the scope of those supernatural experiences. Hallelujah. If I was filled with the Holy Ghost supernaturally, I can as well know exactly where to read in my exam supernaturally. Glory to Jesus. If I was born again supernaturally, I can as well live the holy life powered by grace. Glory to Jesus. Those character failures and moral issues can well become a thing of the past because I was born again supernaturally. Do you get what we're saying here? Lay hold on the promises of God. Refuse to take no for an answer. And I'll show you something before we close. Praise God forevermore. If God can bless people, he's blessing me now. If God can heal the sick, I am healed now. And he's healing others through me. If God called them holy brethren, then I live in holiness now. Do you get what we're saying here? Look at Hebrews chapter 11. The all of fame of people who worked in faith. Everything they did by faith, I can do it now. Hallelujah. Do you get the point? Everything they did by faith, I can do it now. You know one of the things that, 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 that gives me confidence? I'm a Serbia church planter. I planted churches in at least three, four cities across this nation. And every time I have to go to a new city, you know what I say to myself? Isaiah, the Bible says, look to Abraham, your father. For I called him alone. And I increased him. And I made him a father of many nations. So I'm not afraid to be alone. Glory to Jesus. He did it with Abraham. He will do it with me. Are you getting what we're talking about here? This is how we read the word of God. We don't read the word of God as an historical book. We read the word of God as our now reality. The Bible says the stories recorded in scriptures were recorded for us. Those things were recorded so that we can see and know what manner of men we are. Stop your neighbor a high five, say you are not ordinary. <clears throat> Stop your neighbor a high five, say you are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. What God has done is the testimony of what God can do even now and with you. The Bible says, without controversies, God is no respecter of persons. If he used one, he can use all. If he used her, he can use him. Are you getting the point here? God is no respecter of persons. God can use you, he will use you, and he is using you even now. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What God has done is proof of what God will do. Are you getting what I'm saying to me, to you tonight? What God has done is a proof of what God will do. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Say with me, say I walk in power. I walk miracles. I function in an intense anointing, liberating my generation for God. Are you following what I'm saying to you tonight? This is who we are. This is not who we will be. This is who we are. I think that much of our issues in this generation is that we're always saying, this is who I will be. Oh, one day. You know, have you heard those things? And we, we sit about it in our rooms, in our workplaces, in the marketplace of this world. I say, one day. Ah. One day like this. I'll just lay hands like this. And the people will just walk. That one day is today. Are you hearing me? I'm speaking to your spirit. Too. Something is leaping inside of you as I'm talking. That one day is today. We shout things like, oh, a new generation is rising. A new generation is rising. I am the new generation. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you getting This is a shift of mindset. That's what Jesus did in Luke chapter 4. You know, he could as well as have also read it as prophecy. He could, have, he could have read it as prophecy. The word of God is not set in antiquity, neither is it set in the future. The word of God is set in now. Do you get the point? It's set in now. It is now. 
It is the people who dare to believe the word of God as now realities that do exploits. Amen. Father Lord told the story of a certain man who went to the mountain to pray for many days and fasting. And he was praying for Agbara 1930. Praying for the God of Babala. He prayed 40 days and he kept praying, 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 praying. God, give me power, give me power. And one of those days, while he was praying on the mountain, he got very tired and he fell down out of hunger. And as he fell down, he started rolling to the base of the mountain. By the time he rolled to the base of the mountain and his body started touching the beggars. You know, when somebody staggering and fell down and beggars were sitting on the base and then some were crippled, some were blind, all manner of inf- deformity in their bodies. As he rolled and was touching them, they started jumping off from their wheelchairs, dropping their clutches. He now realized that the power he had been praying for had arrived. He didn't get that. That means that, listen, you're powerful. You're powerful. I think sometimes we are afraid to admit that we're powerful. Sometimes we are afraid to admit that we're God's anointed. We're afraid to admit. Second chapter 4, verse 7. Perhaps my favorite scripture. For we have, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We will not have, we did not have, we have. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I carry this treasure. I am the answer to the art cry of my generation for God. My generation is looking for God and God has sent me as his ambassador. God has sent me as his representative. God has sent me as his emissary, as his envoy. I am the answer to the endless expectations of your hearts. I will read Romans chapter 8. The Bible says the endless expectation of creation eagerly awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. It means that they were waiting for me. My manifestation is only being delayed by my indecisiveness. Can I rise up today and say if you are blind, get healed. Are you getting the point here? If you are unsaved, I'll get you saved. If you need a revival, I'll minister revival. This is who I am. This is who God has called me to be. Let us close. By reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. I think we should rise up to our feet because we're going to do certain uh, faith actions at this point. Rise up to your feet. I told you there will be a breakout of joy. I want to show you something. And I wanted to see this on your feet. First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Are you there? If you are there, say hallelujah. If you are not there, say praise God. So everyone is there. Jump with me to verse 20. Let's see something. Oh, I love the word. Don't you just love the word of God? I love the word of God. And I'm laying hold on the promises. Do you, do you know, before we read 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 1.20, remember the story of Peter and James, right? Was it Peter and James? At the gate called Beautiful. And they meant that man, Cripple. And he looked to them wanting harms and Peter and James looked at him and said silver and gold we don't have I believe that they had, had money but they were trying to shift his mindset he said silver and gold we don't have but such as we have that's how believers talk such it, 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 they, they didn't say I will pray to God to heal you are you getting my point here he said such it is mine that's why when Melchizedek met Abraham, he said, blessed be Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. Possessor. Kapatana kapaya. Blessed be my Juja, possessor of heaven and earth. So when I stand before the questions of life, I can say such as I have. In the workplace, when there are issues and controversy, I can say such as I have. Wisdom. Christ has been given to us the wisdom and the power of God. So we have the power, we have the wisdom. So when they are confused and the boardroom is in disarray, you can say such as I have. I have wisdom. I can demystify every mystery by the anointing that is upon my life. Hallelujah. Such as I have. One manner of men. 2 Corinthians 120, let's see. Let me open my Bible too, so that we can all see it together. Second Corinthians 1 20. Glory to God. 
Don't you just love the word of God? For all. Did you see that? Did it say some? Did it say a few? Did it say what else? It said for all the promises of God in Christ are what? Yes. And in him, amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Ah, many, many people don't understand this scripture. Many believers don't understand this scripture. It is a sum of the promises of God. It says every promise of God in Christ is yes. That means there's no promise in scripture that is not for me. Are you getting the point there? If there is a promise of God in scripture, it is for me. So I don't approach God based on any promise in scripture and he says no. I don't approach God and say I want to heal the sick. He says no. Because I am... No, no, no. no. What's this? What's this? He situates those promises. Help me. He situates those promises within the confines of a reality. So he says all the promises of God in Christ. Kanamantas Kapaya. And where are we? Where are we? Where are we? If any man be in Christ. So I am in that place where all the promises of God are yes. I am in that zone. I am in a, listen, I am in the zone of the yes of God. I am in the zone of the yes of God. I'm in the zone of the yes of God. All the promises of God in Christ, there are yes and amen. Glory to God. So if there's a promise of prosperity, it is yes for me. If there's a promise of divine health, yes. Are you getting the point here? Yeah. Say prosperity, yes. Prosperity, amen. Healing, yes. Healing, amen. Long life, yes. Long life, amen. Oh, are you getting my point here? Begin to declare whatever it promises you want to lay hold on tonight. Say yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Healing the sick. Yes. Healing the sick. Amen. Yes. Slap your neighbor high five. Say yes and amen. Slap your neighbor high five. Say yes and amen. It doesn't matter where it pinches you. If a promise exists in scripture to that effect, there's an eternal yes. There's an unwavering yes. All you got to do is amen. Let me say it this well. Jesus has said yes. You only need to agree and say amen. Jesus has said an eternal yes in the presence of the Father for us. We just agree and say, so be it. Amen. Oh, glory to God. You are prospering. Amen. God is lifting you up. Amen. New levels of victory. Amen. New levels of at the anointing. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Glory. Yes and amen. Glory. All oh, the promises of God in Christ. There are yes. And in him, amen. Yes. And in him, amen. Yes and amen. There is no good thing that the Father is withholding from me. There is an eternal yes in Christ. If there's a good thing that I desire, I can have it. If there's a good thing that I desire, I have it now. For all the promises of God in Christ. Now somebody, some religious person may ask you that why are you claiming promise and not claiming cost? So I'll give you the answer. It says cost is he that hang on the tree so that the blessings of Abraham may rest upon the Gentiles. So he has borne my cost. Hey, hey, the chastisement that brought us peace has been laid upon him. So the cross, the curses has been dealt with. And the Bible says, cost, costless shall not stand. So there is no other cost for me to be cursed. Are you following me? But what the scripture says is that all promises in him. Yes. You desire a good home. Yes. Fine husband. Anointed. Yes. Tall. Yes. Dark. 
Are you handsome? Yes, sir. Faithful. You know, you know, you know, but this generation is being taught to accept certain things. I say, all men cheat. That's how they do. Your whole husband will not cheat too. Because it's a promise of God in scripture for you. And it's yes and amen. Don't accept certain realities. This is why believers accept certain realities. They refuse to lay hold. And this is how we lay hold. We vehemently declare the yes of God and the amen by him. Can you slap your neighbor a high five? Say yes and amen, yes and amen, yes and amen. Father, we thank you. What a time, what a time in the world. Oh, I feel the anointing of God's spirit here. If you came here with any desire, I want you to project your desire right now. In the next two minutes, project your desire. In the next seven days, you're coming with your own testimony. It doesn't matter how how hard or how difficult you think that that thing is. I declare right now, by the time we meet again next week, Sunday, Rafi no susto plarate ganosta, your testimony is right in your hands because you have a yes from heaven. In Jesus' name, we pray. Come on, give Jesus a clap. Glory to God. Please have your seat in God's presence. We've come to the end of the global teaching service for this week. Um, if you want to give the account details, will be on your screen right now. You can just punch in the digits and give to the glory of God. So we'll meet again next week, Sunday, 7 p.m. God bless you.